Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you, everybody's doing good. Uh, welcome to the mobile version of the Black Voice. Uh, I'm actually on the road going to take care of some family business and decided it's kind of wet and raining so this is not going to be too long. Uh, but decided to drop in on something that I think is important. And it's quiet now, just me on the road, so I thought I'd drop in and talk to you about it. This has been a crazy week uh, with everything that's going on with uh, uh, the rift with ADOS and Yvette Cornell and Antonio Moore uh, taking shots and going after uh, Dr. Anderson. And uh, ultimately, the divide and schisms that are going to that are already existing and that are going to take place because of it. Uh, this isn't anything new. This is um, how, how it, it goes down. Anytime momentum is being built in any direction, uh, there's always something that personal or financial that gets in the way. And maybe I'll come back and I'll talk about that a little bit later down the road. But what I want to talk about now is as I look at this and I look at the mechanism mechanisms because we wouldn't be talking about uh, Yvette Carnell, Antonio Moore, Jason Black, uh, Professor Black Truth, uh, and Tariq Nasheed, all of these other uh, people that we're talking about uh, if it wasn't for the technology that's available. Uh, we're talking about new black media. I'm talking about new black media as a whole, not just ADOS, not just uh, Jason Black and uh, the Black Authority, not just Rick Wallace and the, uh, the Black Voice. I'm talking about everything that we're able to do, the advances we've been able to have, the reason we even know, uh, well, the most of us know who Claude Anderson and Dr. Welsing is, is because the growth and advancement of uh, social media, the internet, and all of the digital technology that makes things real time. Almost everything can happen at real time now. Uh, so we're learning things when they happen. We have the ability to go back and touch things and we have people who are willing to put into time, the time to share with us uh, the things that they think are pertinent to black, uh, to black uh, empowerment, black liberation and so forth. But what we have to understand is we're going to have to take a more direct uh, approach to um, a more direct approach to uh, engaging what we have here uh, by way of media technology. What I mean by that is we need to own it. Uh, YouTube is great. Uh, it's done some great things for me, but like I found out uh, at the beginning of November, they can snatch it away just like that. 1,600 videos, well over 3 million views, uh, uh, over 15,000 uh, subscribers and growing rapidly. Uh, and just like that, gone because we don't control it. Uh, there are opportunities out there to invest in black media and owning the platforms. Uh, I've asked for support. Uh, I know Neota Yora has done a great deal of helping me syndicate my work and syndicate, it syndicates so much and she has her hand in it. But we need, simply put, we need your support uh, to make this happen. We need to be looking at the importance of owning our own platforms. Uh, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I heard that at one point Jason Black's uh, channel went down. I, I know of someone else, Lisa Carrara, whose channel was taken down and she had to fight to get it back up. I know people who've had to actually go to court uh, to try to get their channel back. And obviously, there are going to be things that happen when you are a black man specifically and you're speaking truth to power unpo unapologetically. And this isn't about philosophy. This isn't about getting on one side of one philosophy. This is about that can be multiple philosophies. That can be multiple sub movements within the, the, the total gross movement towards empowerment. Not everybody's going to take the same route. Not everybody's going to take the same approach. Not all strategies will fit everybody else. This thing is so much bigger than even reparations, which is a big part of the big, big debate that's going on right now. And 
who did it, who's what, and all of the I need to be recognized, I'm the one who did it thing. My whole thing is, it's so much out there that I sleep floating around that I initiated through my research. It doesn't matter to me. You know, when I when I first do it, I sign off on it. Somebody takes it and uh, repurposes it and puts it out there, it's out there. That's all that matters to me, is that at the end of the day, the work that I put in is gonna matter. Uh, those who have worked with me and been by me, you know what I'm responsible for. Uh, the people who matter the most, my wife, my family, and my closest friends know what I've done. Everybody else is, I'm out here trying to help black people. Uh, this isn't about that, but what I'm saying is with that and everything else, we are going to have to be more engaged, direct, directly engaged in controlling how we are distributing our content. And that can't continue to be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, we need our own space that we can go and we can do it. And we're not going to get uh, jacked, uh, trolled, censured, uh, censored, and, and so many other things. We need to be able to speak truth to power and bring real truth and light to multiple situations, not uh, not just what we're on online now going head to head on. That's a whole other thing. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna deal with how we're handling that. Uh, I, I think that it needs to be handled. I think that it needs to be brought out. I see a lot of things in the way that we're responding to it uh, that I think needs to be addressed. But on a bigger note, excuse me, on a bigger note, uh, we have a problem and we need uh, the support of everybody who believes in what we do. If you believe in what we do, support what we do because we need to set up our own things. I've been working with Neota Yora uh, uh, for a couple of years now uh, and the work that she's put in to build something uh, for us is unbelievable. The work that I'm doing now to set up my own channels and, 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 and uh, spaces uh, and then, you know, we got to get everybody over there. We've we, we got to have all that done. I just want us to really focus on what it means to really truly be empowered. You got to own it. If you don't own it, it's not power. If somebody else is funding it, that's not a part of the belief system that you're in. It's not power. It's somebody that's going to try to usurp the force and execute their power in your movement. And so we have to be very careful about that. I just wanted to take some time. I was sitting up thinking about it and looking at it. And I look at the, you know, the time and effort it took me to build that channel. And right when it's taken off, it's taken away. And I know why it happened. Uh, anybody that followed me and knows how I do things know, know why, knows why it happened. Uh, but it is what it is. It happened. It was, it's a lesson learned. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll, you know, I'll take it back right now. Uh, but I'm definitely working to put myself in other spaces that I control. Uh, and we need your help to do that. Support the work that I'm doing. If you believe in what I'm doing, if you can vibe with what I'm doing. Uh, now, I'm telling you now, don't come over here expecting a person that's perfect. Don't come over here expecting a person that's going to uh, try to bring content to appease you and make you feel good. I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to bring winning news, to create solutions, to use my skill set to help build my people, protect my people, to love my people. Sometimes loving my people means telling them the truth when they don't want to hear the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you in love. I'm not here to attack nobody, dig nobody, tear nobody down. Uh, you know, I, hopefully I've outgrown that completely, but I know that that's my aim every day to wake up, to go to work. Now, I'm going to call a spade a spade. But I'm not going after somebody digging in their mess, trying to throw mess up in dirt. But if I see you wrong, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. But I'm not here trying to tear you down in front of the masses. If I think you're wrong, I'm going to say you're wrong. And that's enough. Either, you know, either you're going to believe me or you're going to listen to me and the people are going to hear me or they're not. And I'm, I'm good with that, but I'm not trying to look at ways to destroy people. That's an energy I don't want. You know, I've, I've spoken on what I think about it. I think it was dead wrong. I believe in there being a space for elders where they're off limits. And sometimes elders say some stuff. Like, and I use my mom as an example. Me and my mom, I was reared by my great-grandparents, my mother's grandparents, my grandmother's parents. And they taught me to respect my mom, even though there's a lot that went on that I could have easily stood up and said, because of this, I don't have to respect her. They taught me. 
that that's a space and that I respect the space even when I can't respect the person. And it taught me something. And this generation that's coming up is being pushed off. I look at kids. Very few kids say sir and ma'am anymore. You know, there's everybody talking to everybody as if they're on their level. When a person has put in years, like 85 years, they've lived through some things you haven't lived through. That alone gives them a space where they should be given a certain level uh, of now, I don't, I'm not mean sitting up and agreeing with something you don't agree with. State you don't agree, but you can do that respectfully. You know, the personal assaults on somebody that can put in that kind of time. But what I'm saying is we need a space that we can operate in that's ours. We need that space. So I'm asking you, support it. I mean, get behind it like you ain't got behind it before. Take the energy that we've been going at each other with uh, 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 between ADOS and whatever else uh, Everybody else Right now And my thing is I'm not a person that has a problem With the concept of ADOS I have a problem with the way Things are being done And it just is I believe that you have to respect the space Of the people who are descendants of slaves Because they've endured the longest And the hardest But there's an entire 150 years after slavery Where we have been locked out of wealth building, we've been attacked, assault, lynched, redlined, gentrified, convict leased, uh, under black codes, and all of this was after slavery, and some of those were immigrants that were not descendants of slaves, and I think they are a part of the discussion. That's just me. I think the more you start to isolate yourself, if you want to find out what happens when you isolate yourself in, a, in the midst of a place that the enemy controls, go ask anybody that may be still left what happens from Tulsa, Rosewood, Slocum, Wilmington, Delaware. You've got to have allies and alliances outside of yourself. But but that's a whole other discussion. But what I'm saying is we need to support. I'm asking you directly and personally. Support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. And uh, let's start supporting new black media. Uh, for those who are out there who are a part of new black media, let's start setting a new standard of excellence on how we handle ourselves and carry ourselves uh, and what we deliver. Uh, my platform, uh, although I'm rebuilding it and it's got a long way to go, my platform is not where I settle my personal scores. My platform is where I fight for my people. I keep my personal feelings out of it. I get attacked a lot. If you go to the threads of the last four videos, you know, I get attacked. I got people jumping in my Instagram uh, DM and that's not even for a uh, uh, for, uh, uh, the black community. That's one of my business channels. Jumping in and going off, haven't responded. You know, uh, I'm not going to wear my feelings on my sleeve. When you get in and do this work, you can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. You can't be sitting up trying to uh, answer back and fire back at everybody that says something that's contrary to what you believe or how you feel and you feel like they're taking a shot at you. That's a whole lot of wasted energy that could be focused on creating strategies and plans. And these plans have to be well thought out. They have to be highly complex. They got to be very flexible and mo mobile in order to pull them off. And it takes a think tank. It takes people sitting down and coming together, not just talking. But that's that. I'm asking for your support. Uh, thanks for those of you who do support. Let's make some things happen in, uh, as we move into 2020. Let's go in with some specific ideas of what we're expecting to do in our personal lives, in our business lives, as a black collective, and as a nation of people. That's what I have to say right now. Thank you, thanks, guys, for listening. I'm out. Peace.